So tonight's original now, in-depth reporting on a topic we've been watching. Today, the Biden administration is set to end the MPOX emergency declaration, a disease that used to be called monkeypox, which caused some pretty nasty symptoms like fever, chills, ache, a really bad rash. At the height of MPOX, there was an average of nearly 500 reported cases a day in the U.S. Look at this. Now that number is less than five. That is remarkable, right? But how? How did that happen? Dr. Akshay Sayal has the story. James Ferguson says he was among the first Indiana residents to contract MPOX back in June of last year. I had a pretty severe case of it. So I ended up with 55 open lesions the size of a dime to a quarter. They took weeks to heal. The treatment, including an extensive quarantine period, took its toll. Having to be quarantined for six weeks. There's a depression that comes with that. Shortly after his diagnosis, Ferguson started to see messaging about the disease online. I think that really did a lot to, to bring awareness and, and why we're now able to say that this is something that's no longer a huge concern. Today, the Biden administration is no longer calling MPOX a public health emergency. The way that the vaccine strategy evolved represents a nimble response to what we were seeing on the ground. It wasn't like other MPOX outbreaks. This one acted a lot differently. That's Dr. Dimitri Daskalakis, the White House deputy coordinator for the MPOX response. He says there were three key things that led to this success. One, having enough vaccines for at-risk populations. Two, clear messaging that led to behavioral changes. And three, immunity from those infected. What are some lessons you think we've learned about outbreaks going forward? I remember when I first landed here at the White House, having the president say to me, how can we make the community of gay, bisexual, other men who have sex with men and LGBT folks, how can we make them know that we are concerned about this and care? Starting with community and then worrying about how do we get the numbers down? That's an important lesson for me and I think for others in terms of how we approach outbreaks. The MPOX vaccines began rolling out in August of 2000. 2022. Messaging by public health officials about MPOX was complicated. There was fear it would create a stigma around the LGBTQ plus community. Working really hard to make sure that we don't land stigma in that community the way that other diseases have had stigma land in that community has been a really guiding principle of how we do the work. Messaging aside, history offers a clue as to why the gay community reacted so quickly to MPOX. The HIV AIDS epidemic predominantly impacted gay men. That health emergency may have mobilized them to respond quickly to another disease affecting their community. So it's no surprise given our exposure to all these other things in society that seem to be a problem uh, statistically for our community that when something like monkeypox gets thrown at us, we know exactly what to do. It's, it's, it's nothing new. According to an online survey of gay, bisexual, and men who have sex with other men conducted by the CDC, in response to the MPOX outbreak, 48% reduced their number of sex partners, 50% reduced one-time sexual encounters, and 50% reported reducing sex with partners met on dating apps or at sex venues. While Ferguson has recovered from MPOX, he still has marks from the disease. Eventually, you know, if somebody's going to see you naked and you have, you know, 55 scars, uh, you have some explaining to do. So, uh, it is something I'll probably have to explain to future partners. Even though the scars won't go away for some, the combination of a rapid response by officials and those at risk certainly helped curb the spread. Dr. Akshay Sayal with that fascinating look, he joins us now. So more than a million people have gotten this MPOX vaccine as of the most recent CDC data back to, I think it was about a week ago here. This can affect anybody. It specifically affected the gay, bisexual community, men who have sex with other men as well. How, how have public health officials worked to create a stigma around this disease while making sure people at risk got vaccinated? That is one of the questions that came up when we first, first, first started covering this outbreak, Dr. Sayal. Yeah, Hallie, that was really the big question is how do we get this message across that this disease is predominantly affecting gay men while at the same time it's not a gay disease? And you and I talked all throughout the outbreak about getting the message out there. How can we really target this messaging to that population? And to the Biden administration's credit, you know, they did things like having vaccines at gay pride parades. Um, so by, by doing things like that, by meeting people where they're at, they were really able to get this outbreak under control with the vaccine and having behavioral changes from those affected. And you see it in the numbers now with just a handful of cases today. Dr. Akshay Sayal, thank you again for that great reporting. Good to see you. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.